especially itong um, part 4, choosing your battles. Super effective. Okay, save and continue. First part is setting expectations. Students need structure to find success in school. That does not mean you have to be a disciplinarian who spends most of his or her time punishing students for small misbehaviors. It just means you need to be clear about your expectations for the class from the beginning and carry out those expectations throughout the year. We will start by discussing some strategies you can use to set expectations for your class. Then we will review how or some common expectations teachers have found success with. Okay, so alam na natin, no, na-discuss na natin yung positive, about dun sa positive punishment. At uh, nakita natin na uh, effective din na kapag yung student hindi niya ginawa yung, kunyari, hindi siya gumawa ng homework niya. So, of course, yung magkakaroon siya ng F dun sa grade niya. Anyway, let's continue. Subpart is uh, 9.1.1, How to Set Expectations. Alright. First bullet here, more than anything, make sure you address classroom expectations on the first day to set the tone for the rest of the year. First impressions are important. And if you begin the year allowing behavior you do not want for the rest of the year, you are going to make things more difficult for yourself. Naalala ko yung mga teachers ko noon, no, nung high school, traditional ano, way. <laughs> Alright? Ang sasabihin ka, yung teacher mataray ka agad pagdating, ano, sa umpisa, sasabihin niya ka agad, pag kayo mabait, mas mabait ako. Pag kayo salbahe, mas salbahe ako. Alright, so, tandang-tanda ko yung litanya na yan ng mga teachers ko noon. Anyway, next, one method for setting classroom expectations that has met success is to use the first day of class to have the students work together to create the classroom expectations. Have your students get into small groups and discuss what they expect out of this class, what they expect from you, and what they expect from themselves and the other students. After 5 to 10 minutes, Bring the class together and create a list that you narrow down into the final set of classroom expectations. Bringing your students to the process gives them the opportunity to see the importance of these expectations, stresses them, and gives the students the feeling they are in control. Alright, remember, student-centered tayo dito. Now, when they have or when they break a class rule, they are breaking the very rules they helped develop. Okay. Next, you can also draw the students into the activity by having them work together on, on a class pledge or class promise. This, wo this would work the same way, except the pledge or promise is more personal and less quantifiable. If you would like, you can take the class pledge and synthesize it into a list of classroom expectations so you have both. It will be more effective. Next. You can also take a more traditional route and create the list of expectations on your own. If you do this, make sure they are posted already when the students walk into the classroom and you take time to review them with the class. Students will notice them if they are posted on your wall but won't take notice of them unless they are explicitly reviewed. Save and continue. The second sub-part is about common expectations for classroom. So even if you ask your students to come up with classroom expectations, you want to make sure that they are going to be effective. As the students make suggestions and you generate the list, find subtle way to steer the list toward what you are looking for. By doing this, you ensure the expectations are clear and they encompass everything you think is important. Here are some expectations you should definitely make sure end up on your list. Okay, first of all, be respectful of others. Mm -hmm. 
this is the most classic and universal expectation for you to set for your students. Okay, this is a great expectation because it encompasses so many things. It refers to students being respectful to the teacher, okay, listen to the teacher especially, to other students, to the school, and to anyone who walks into the room. A respectful environment is more conducive to learning because students feel more comfortable to take risks and are less likely to feel ridiculed. Okay, the second one is routines. Okay, we are not going to outline your routines here because you are going to come up with them on your own. But you should try to end up or to set up a routine for your students. Okay, it will save class time throughout the school year, make your lessons flow better, and engage the students more effectively. Okay, here are some examples. Example number one, when the students come in, where do they get the daily paperwork? If you get your students into the habit of looking in a specific, a specific spot every day, when they walk in the, in the door for any worksheets or paperwork, you will save time by not having to hand them out and take advantage of time you wouldn't have in the lesson. Alright, in example, the time they were walking to their seats. Next, is there a routine or set of rules for when students can leave to go to the bathroom and whether they need to tell you or not? This seems petty, but it can save you from a lot of interruptions from students not knowing if they can just leave or not. Alright, third, when you have class discussions, how do students participate? Do they raise their hands and wait to be called upon? Do they just speak out and respect each other enough to act civilly? Do you have a ball or other object that students can hold when it is their time to talk? These types of routines help students understand how they should act and what behavior is not conducive to a respectful classroom. Okay, kapag nagturo kayo abroad, alright, I'm, I'm not sure kung meron to sa Pilipinas, no? pero dito kasi, um, ang teacher, parati siyang merong assistant, alright? So, yung assistant, yun yung nagpapanatili rin na, uh, na tahimik yung class, yung, yeah, yung classroom, no? Alright, pero yung mga sinabi dito, mga, pwede rin to sa strategy. Halimbawa, kung meron kang ball, alright, ma, parang mag, ano siya, ma, ma, magka-create din siya ng tawag dito, na magiging fun yung learning environment ng mga student. Okay. Next is responsibility. Alright. So, next is sa expectation. All students need to display a mo modicum of responsibility for their learning. But, the responsibilities for which you hold your students accountable are due to their age and your preference. With or whatever you decide, you should be clear about the rules to ensure your students follow them from the start. Let's save and continue. The next part is respect. We already discussed a little about respect in the previous section, right? But it is so important to the way you will manage your classroom that it warrants its own section. Building an atmosphere based on mutual respect will help you avoid most problems new teachers face. Okay, so let's discuss how respect manifests in your classroom. First, why is respect important? Respect is a fairly, sm fairly small word that represents a lot and can have many different manifestations in the classroom. Respect in the classroom does not just mean that students listen to the teacher. It is much more than that. And there are three types of respect you need to facilitate in your classroom. Number one, respect for the teacher.
this is the kind of respect people usually think about when you talk about respect in the classroom. While this is only one of the three types, it is still extremely important. Part of discovering who you are as a teacher is discovering your teaching style. Some teachers demand specific behavior in their classroom and hold students accountable for acting outside these guidelines, while others are more laid back in their style. Neither will work if the teacher has not gained the respect of his or her students. If the environment is too strict and students do not respect the teacher, they will lash out and be combative. If the environment is too laid back and students do not respect the teacher, they will, uh, they will walk all over him or her and not listen. Regardless of what your teaching style evolves into, your classroom environment has to be predicated upon respect. Alright, so what's the next one? Next is respect for other students. Okay, besides being like or besides direct lecturing, almost every teaching strategy requires students to interact with each other or take intellectual risks. If your students do not show respect for each other in the classroom, these strategies will not work. How can you expect a student to answer a question he or she is not sure of when other students in the class feel justified in disrespecting and ridiculing him or her? If you ever want to have class discussions, work in groups, have your students present or do anything that involves students speaking out loud and taking a chance, you need to rely on the class treating each other with respect. Okay, so basically, tayo mga teacher, makikita naman natin yun. And of course, we should never tolerate this kind of behavior, right? Next, respect for themselves. Just as much as you need your students to treat each other with respect, you need students to have a respect or to have respect rather for themselves. You do not have the ultimate control over this, but you can do everything you can to constantly encourage them to respect themselves. This means being encouraging of students sharing and offering students positive reinforcement for contributing to the class. Alright, if you can find a way to facilitate all three types of respect, you will accomplish much more with your students. Let's save and continue. Next, the next sub part is about how to facilitate respect. Creating classroom environment that has foundations in mutual respect does not mean you can never have fun. If done properly, it will give you the opportunity to have more fun in the classroom because you will know your students can handle it and still get their work done and progress as students. Here are some tips on how to provide that safe and enjoyable community classroom for your students. Okay, the first one, your classroom needs to be built on mutual respect. So discuss respect on the first day, all right, on the very first day, and you really have to stress it throughout the year. Let the students know they have your respect and you require them to show your respect. Students will have a harder time being disrespectful to teachers who have shown them respect. Okay. Respect begets respect, right? Kailangan mutual dito. Mm -hmm. So, tayong mga teachers, kailangan ipakita natin na nire-respeto natin yung students natin. Remember that we are the role model sa class natin or sa, class, sa mga students natin, right? So, tayo mismo yung kailangan maunang magpakita nun sa kanila para i-respect din nila tayo. Alright, this sounds obvious but needs to be said. Follow your own rules and treat your students with respect. Do not make them feel dumb for an answer that is wrong and lead by example. Kagaya na sinabi ko kanina, right? Okay, tayo yung role model. Kung sinabi natin we need to show respect to each other, kailangan tayo rin mismo yung magpakita muna, right? 
lead by example. If a student is off the mark with an answer or comment in terms of being correct, not in terms of being disrespectful, look for their train of thought and give them credit for where they went with the answer while letting them down easy. Students will look to you to model the behavior you are looking for from them. So be a good classroom role model. Third, whoever you are doing, or whenever, rather, I'm sorry, napakaliit, whenever you are doing an activity that will require students to step out of their comfort zone, make mutual respect a spoken goal. If necessary, attach a grade to it. Students need to be reminded constantly about how they should act. So when you need them to show respect to each other, it is worth it to take a few minutes to go over it. If you are doing an activity that requires students to critique each other, model the behavior first to show them what constructive criticism looks like. Next, handle disrespectful behavior severely. Even if you have a lenient classroom where students feel free to express themselves, make disrespect the thing you draw a line in a sand about. If you have discussed respect and the students are aware how they should act, treat disrespectful behavior seriously and implement real and meaningful consequences for disrespectful actions. Okay, positive punishment naman yung ibibigay natin, right? Alright, and lastly, do not be afraid to bring parents and administrators into your plans for a respectful classroom. Disrespectful behavior should be accompanied by both punishment and by contact home. Students will often make rash decisions and not worry about the in-school consequences. But if your students know they will also face consequences at home, they are more likely to think about their actions. Okay, ito ay napakagandang tip, right? Ito, especially yung pinakahuli. Kasi minsan magkaiba talaga yung behavior ng students natin, no? Sa bahay, iba sila, tapos iba rin yung pinapakita nila na behavior pag nasa school sila. Right, so kailangan alam ni student na in case or kapag nag ano sila nag misbehave sila, we will uh, get their parents involved or we will inform their parents about their their behavior. Okay, save and continue. Right, <clears throat> excuse me. The third part is accountability. While most discussions of classroom management focus on managing classroom behavior, accountability is an important aspect you can control in many other areas of your class. It is a pretty simple idea. Set expectations for your students and hold, hold them to those expect, expectations. Oh, nabubulal ako. Sorry, ah. Why is it? then that so many teachers have problems holding their students accountable here are some possible reasons all right subpart why is accountability so hard why is it hard for teachers to hold students accountable sometimes if you all admit it is important why isn't it second nature okay so hindi lang mga newbie or mga new teachers um nakaka-experience nito minsan or may struggle holding their students accountable, right? Minsan, pati yung mga matagal na rin, kasi depende rin sa ugali ng student, right? Or depende rin sa student. Okay, first, holding students accountable requires a confrontation. While teachers know student behavior will be better if they hold the students accountable, that does not make putting their foot down any easier. Well instinct, well, instinct tells you the right thing to do when a student acts inappropriately is to punish him or her accordingly. It can be hard to actually do it because you will or you know it will often end in an argument. Okay. When you are trying to build an atmosphere of mutual respect, it can be difficult to know when you are overreacting and when you are not being strict enough. If a student clearly acts inappropriately, it may be easy to punish him or her immediately. 
What happens though when the student toes the line of inappropriate? At what point do you act and at what point do you let it go? This can be a very difficult decision. Okay, sabi dito, no? Immediately or right away. Alright, you don't uh, give the room for that bad behavior to grow. <laughs> okay, next, if you come down too hard on students, it could encourage more inappropriate behavior rather than appropriate behavior. If students feel they are being punished unfairly, they are more likely to act out in defiance. Mm -hmm. Some students are terrible at, the, at dealing with confrontation and it can be easier to let their behavior go. While this might be a good strategy with some students as long as they are not being disrespectful and are getting their work done, it could have a negative effect on the class environment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Students do not like it when they are held so to stricter standards than their classmates. So, if you make too many concessions, you end up making concessions for the entire class or upsetting the students acting appropriately. Confrontations are stressful and it is easier to let something go or pretend you didn't see or hear it rather than make an issue of it. Every student has a different story, and when you know one of your students is going through a tough time or has a less than satisfac satisfactory home life, you feel compassion toward him or her and want to cut him or her slack, some slack. No one strives to be mean to be the mean teacher. And as much as you want to believe that you don't care what your students think about you, you will care. Yeah. Totoo yun. Okay? Minsan sasabihin natin, I'm still the teacher. They're just the students. Pero, ang totoo niyan, we really care about kung ano yung um, tingin nila sa atin as a teacher. Right? Mm -hmm. Not only about our performance, but also how we treat our students, right? Kung paano din nila tayo i-treat as their teacher. Okay, are they treating us with respect? Okay. And also, um, I think yung bottom line dito, no? Alright, so kapag sa isang classroom, tapos yung estudyante, nag-misbehave siya, initial reaction natin, minsan sisigawan or sasawayan agad yung bata, right? Pero, much better if you, like, uh, hindi mo siya sasawayan sa harap ng klase, right? Kasi, number one, nagpapakita na yon na dinisrespect mo siya or pinahiya mo ka agad yung bata sa harap ng mga classmates niya. So, ang um, ending nun, mas magiging, ano siya, parang depend, uh, at tawag dito, defensive. Alright, and then, ang sabi nga dito, although ang sinasabi dito is in general, no, they are more likely to act out in defiance. Ito naman, kapag pinanish mo, nagpanish ka sa buong classroom, although yung iba is matino naman, pero binigyan mo pa rin sila ng punishment. Alright, so, kailangan i natin. Timbangin natin ang mga bagay-bagay. Save and continue. The next subpart is how do you keep vigilant? Alright. With all these reasons to let things go, how do you remain vigilant? We all agree the right way to act is to punish inappropriate behavior with a reasonable teacher response. But how do you make it easier, less stressful, and less disruptive? There is no easy answer, but here is a strategy <coughs> excuse me, that might make things a little easier for you. Okay, first, it's not me, it's you. Think about it. Most of the concerns listed in the previous section stem from being the enforcer as a teacher. Okay, ito no, parang kapag makikipag-break, it's not you, it's me. Ay, baliktad naman. Alright. So, the best way to make things easier on you is to remind the students they are controlling their behavior. Instead of being the enforcer, be upset they have done this to themselves. And upset they will have to, pay, to face a punishment. <coughs> Excuse me. 
This shift in attitude mentally shifts the confrontation and makes the student realize their actions are causing their problems. Of course, this will only work or this only works if you have clear rules of conduct for their behavior already in place. Okay, so the first one is as much as you may feel bad when you are doing out punishments, remember that you are doing nothing wrong and have done nothing wrong. You are not the one who misbehaved or acted in, inappropriately. They are. Put the burden back on the students and watch how many of them begin to check their own behavior. All right. Um, isa to sa way ng pagdidisiplina natin. Remember tayo mga teachers, tayo yung second parent nila no, sa school. So, syempre, as a parent, dinidisiplina natin yung mga anak natin. Actually, ginagamit ko rin to sa anak ko. No? Hindi ko sinasabi kapag kunyari meron silang nagawang mali. Hindi ko sinasa, hindi hindi ko sinasa, sinasabi ko na hindi ako sa kanila galit. Galit ako dun sa ginawa nila. All right? And then I will ask them kung anong dapat, anong kailangan nilang gawin, 'di ba, para ma-correct 'yon. All right. Next, when a student gets in trouble, your attitude and behavior should re should reflect the following ideas. The student is the person who cho who chose to break a classroom rule. The student is the person who had the choice in this situation, not you. You are forced to punish the student because of the rules you all set at the beginning of the year. Remember, they are involved dun sa, dun sa pagsiset ng rules, right? Okay, this is going to help your students, so let go of your guilt. Okay, let go of that guilty feeling. Next part, when a student misbehaves, treat it like you are on their side and upset they will now have to face a punishment. This makes the process seem like both of you are experiencing the punishment and you are beholden to the rules. The rules become the enforcer, not the teacher. Oh no, Billy, that's not, that's the thing. That's the third time you had your phone out. Now you have to get detention. Right? <laughs> okay. Next, notice how this shift in attitude helps you keep your students accountable without making you feel the guilt you usually would. You will see this is actually easier than letting behaviors go and seeing your classroom slowly de-evolve and break down. Last, lastly, students will begin to make more responsibility or to take more responsibility for their actions. They will realize it is their behavior, not the teacher, that is causing them to face punishment. This shift will help you create the classroom environment you want without making you to be or without making you be the, the bad person or the disciplinarian. Let's save and continue. Pasensya na nawawala ako. Next part is choosing your battles. With everything we said about holding students accountable and creating a classroom environment based on respect and having control over your classroom, it is still important that you choose your battles. At the end of the day, your goal as a teacher is to help your students find success. And that can happen if you are kicking your students out for every little infraction. Okay, sabi dito little, no? Kailangan i-stress natin yung salita yun. This is especially true in the case of a volatile student. This does not mean you should let him or her get away with anything that threatens the environment in your classroom. You just need to decide what behaviors are worth the fight and what behaviors are not. Here are some things to consider when working with a child who is prone to confrontation. Right, first, what is causing this behavior? Okay, kailangan alam din natin yung background ng student, no? Alright, a lot of times, the answer to this simple question will tell you how to act. If the student just has a problem dealing with a confrontation, then you can correct his or her behavior by quietly approaching it in a way that does not make a scene. Alright? Tawagin natin sa student, labas tayo saglit, usapin natin doon, no? Hindi yung sisigawan mo sa 
sa gitna ng mga kaklase niya. If the student needs to speak to someone when he or she is having a tough time, it might be smart to have a routine set up so that he or she can see a counselor or school psychologist when he or she feels an outburst coming. Right, next, when vo with volatile or with volatile students, oh, pasensya na po, try to focus your attention on prevention rather than reaction. Okay, get used to seeing the signs of a problem and try to head them off before it gets to the point where you have to impose a punishment or start a confrontation. Quietly approaching a student when he or she seems to be having a bad day shows you care and might compel the students to take control of his or her behavior. While students do not like it when someone gets different treatment than someone else, you need to remember that fair and equal are two different things. Just as you need to differentiate your instruction to account for your students who struggle with the skill, you need to differentiate your management for students who have difficulty behaving. Talk to the student. Ask him or her what triggers outbursts and how you can best approach him or her in a time of stress. Often, the student will know what will help. When he or she does, does not work together to come up with a set of rules and routines that hold the student accountable while giving him or her breathing room. Okay, kapag naggawa tayo ng rule, no, much better na meron tayong list talaga that it is printed para alam din ni student, hindi yung basta sabihin lang natin, oh, natanda mo yung rule, kanyan. Next, enlist the list, enlist the help of other students, okay, rather, with the consent of the volatile student, of course. Does the student have a friend who can help him or her down in stressful situations? If so, you can deflate tensions by giving the friend a signal to step in so you do not have to start a confrontation every time the volatile student acts out. That being said, the friend is a student also, who does not deserve to bear all the weight of his or her friend. Use the friend as a resource, rather than a crutch, to bear the weight of the disciplinary actions you should be imparting. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, save and continue. Yeah, last part na tayo, which is unique strategies. Well, the best strategy... For creating a positive classroom environment involves everything we discussed so far in this module. module. Sometimes you need to employ fresh tactics to encourage positive behavior. Here are some unique strategies that can help you take the confrontation out of the classroom management. First, countdown. Second, commercial break. Kailangan natin yan. Okay, next, body system. Number your students and tight schedule. Isa isahin natin. Countdown, there are many strategies like this, but essentially the countdown involves having some sort of signal to the class that they need to calm down. If you do this properly, you can get students to modify behavior without saying a word. When they get out of hand, simply start the timer and let the students regulate themselves. Okay, nakakatawa kasi yung mga anak ko, magbilang lang ako, one, two, alright? Although hindi nila alam ko anong mangyayari pag dumating na ako dun sa number three, pero pag marinig pa lang nila yung one, behave na sila. <laughs> okay, alright, next, commercial break. If you have a very loud or social group, set up a routine where students are rewarded for positive and diligent behavior with a commercial break or a period of time during the day which they can break from work to walk around and talk to friends socially. You will need to regulate the time for the commercial break carefully and keep it short, right? Like two minutes, it's probably best, say best since that is the traditional length of commercial break. Okay, next is body system. Pair your students up and hold them accountable for each other. If one of the partners missed the directions, the other is there to explain. If one of the partners is acting up, the other is there to deflate the situation. 
handle problems with one of the students as problems with a pair to keep them linked in both reward and punishment. This will not work, however, if one student is compliant and always causing the problems. Okay. I think mas maganda, no? Ipag partner mo yung parehong, ano, compliant. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, next. Number your students. Of course, you want your students to feel like individuals, not just numbers on a sheet to you, right? But assigning each student a number can be helpful. When you need them to act quickly, either getting into groups, presenting ideas, or other behaviors like this, save time by calling out numbers. We're going to have a debate. All the even numbers get on one side of the room and the odd numbers get on the other side. This will cut down on wasted time of organizing students and will promote compliance and a classroom harmony. Lastly, tight schedule. Building up a tight routine can help you encourage diligent behavior. If you create a routine of bell work and exit slips, your students know they need to begin working immediately as class begins, and they know they are accountable for something before they leave. This may seem very simplistic, but it sets a class routine and promotes appropriate behavior. Students know they need to do this every day and come ready to work. Okay, I, I share ko lang, no? Yung sa work ko, sa, sa Palfish, meron dong timer, which is gustong-gusto ko. Kapag, kunyar, kapag halimbawa, merong activity, right? Or exercises. Isaset ko yung timer. So, alam ni student, kasi maalam siya, maririn niya yung tik-tik, mga <laughs> ganyan, no? Then, magra-rush siya na, or, yeah, talagang magsusubikap siya na tapusin niya yung activity na yun. Then, kasi pagka natapo, kapag um, nagawa niya agad-agad yun, sasabihin, well done, right? Kapag natapos niya naman yung oras, time's up lang, right? So, syempre, mas gusto nilang marinig yung well done. Alright, save that, continue, and we are going to proceed with the exam. Ito na yung second to the last exam natin, no? So, module 9, classroom management. Question number one, how can it be helpful to have your students create the class expectations for behavior? Okay, so the answer is letter D, they will be more invested in rules they have set. Okay, kaya mas maganda talaga na involved, involved natin si student. Alright, sa so pagsiset ng rule sa class. Alright, ng class rules. Save and continue. Number two, which of the following is a type of respect students need to have in the classroom? Alright. Una dito, although naka-arrange siya, no, alphabetically. Okay. First one, dun sa napag-aralan natin, respect for the teachers. For the teacher, right? It's, it doesn't involve only listening. Okay. La, number two, or the second, is respect for other students. And also, respect for themselves. So, itong tatlong answer, answers na to, A, B, and Z. Save and continue. Next, how do routines help teachers with classroom management? Okay, so the answer here is letter C. They give students consistency in terms of what behaviors you expect. Save and continue. Number four, when is it a good time to discuss respect with your students? Okay, on the very first day of class. Okay, that's letter A. Letter C, before lessons that promote student sharing. And letter D, whenever there has been an issue with respect. Okay, sabi nga dun sa napag-aralan natin, no? you have to stress it throughout the school year. Okay, kasi minsan nakakalimutan nila. Alright, especially kapag meron mga exciting na group, group uh, projects and so on, group discussions. Okay, so A, C, and D. Save and continue. Number five, why do many teachers avoid holding students accountable? Okay, the uh, simple as this, they want to avoid confrontation. Okay, um, sa iba, iniisip nila, 
um, sayang sa oras, ano, kapag lalabas ka pa tapos i-confront mo sa student. And also, kapag kinonfront mo sa student in front of the uh, in front of the class, magkakaroon din yun ng negative na reaction, right? Save and continue. Number six, confirm if the following statements are true or false. Removing yourself as the enforcer as the enforcer can make confrontations with volatile students easier to handle. That's true. Okay? So the enforcer is the rule that both of you, the teacher and the student, sets. Right? And letter B, you should not let a student's home life impact how you deal with the student. That is definitely false. Okay, remember yung napag-usapan natin kanina, mas matatakot si student no? na, na mag-misbehave kapag alam niya that we can involve or that we are going to involve his parents. Alright, and we are making sure that his parents will be informed of his misbehavior. Okay, save and continue. Number seven, why is it helpful to choose your bottles in the classroom? Okay, letter B, to maintain the level of mutual respect you have created. And letter D, to accommodate students who need their discipline differentiated. Okay, kaya na, naalala nyo kanina yung sinabi, no, na fair and equal are two different words, okay? Hindi siya talaga... It has two different meanings. Magkaiba talaga yung sinabing fair and equal. Okay. Pwede nyo balikan yun. Hindi ko na ma-explain. Save and continue. Okay. Finally, module 10. Getting a TESOL job. Okay. Basa natin dito TESOL. Pero actually, ang bigas dito is TESOL. Right? Okay. TESOL. Mag-stick tayo doon. Getting a TESOL job. Okay, so thank you sa pag-stay sa akin dito sa tutorial. Okay, you've learned everything you need to know. And now, it is time to think about taking the next step and getting a job in the TESOL field. Regardless of the training you have, getting a job in any field can be difficult. So, we will discuss how you can differ differentiate yourself from others when you are seeking employment. In this module, we will discuss what you need to start the process, how to build and write an effective resume, the best interview techniques, and other skills you will need to display your value to potential employers. Everything we have done so far has led to this. So, get ready to start marketing yourself to the kind of employers you would like to build a career with okay so there are five parts what do you need building a resume interview techniques what are they looking for possible destinations and preparing to join a different culture all right save and continue what do you need this is the first part right so there is a lot of demand for qualified individuals to become teachers of english as a second language or ESL. So the most important job we have is to ensure you can find your way to your to the school companies and organizations who are looking for someone like you. In this section, we look specifically at what you need to get a job in the TESOL field, helping students develop their proficiency in English. Okay, at all college degree, right? Kapag iyon talaga yung if you're a teacher by profession. Pero sa ngayon, kapag meron kahit undergrad ka or you have a different degree or another degree, pwede na rin yun. No? As long as certified ka. Meron kang teaching certificates like TESOL and TEFEL, right? Close study of TESOL. Alright, so courses like this... Like this one, give you the background you need to look desirable to an employer. Kaya, di ba, kailangan talaga na napag-aralan na siya itong course na ito. Okay, that you have undergone this course. Okay. Kasi, kagaya na sinabi ko, 
minsan isasama nila ito sa interview, right? Kaya hindi tayo bumibili ng certificates. Work experience. For many of you, this course is your first step toward becoming a teacher or toward becoming a sole teacher. So, you may not yet have work experience. However, many organizations and schools welcome interns and volunteers at different levels of commitment. Some of these organizations and schools offer a track toward full employment from these volunteer or intern positions, right? And so on. Yung importante, makikita natin yung future or yung potential employer natin. Okay, a strong resume. We will also discuss how to build and write a resume in the next section. And of course, a good interview. We will also discuss interview techniques in great detail in a later section. Save and continue. Next part is building a resume. In this section, we will discuss how to write a great resume. But we will first discuss what you can do to build a great resume. This means looking at activities, jobs, and interests that will catch the eye of potential employers and getting experience in them. With that in mind, let's split this section in two. All right, first part or sub part, what looks good on your resume? Okay, before you think about getting your resume out there, think about what you need to have on it to make it impressive and something that will help you stand out in a stack of viable candidates. All right. First, education. Uh -huh. This does not mean you have to run out immediately and yeah. get a master's degree in Sesol, but rather employers want to see you have education relevant to the job. Ito kapag yung mag-work talaga kayo abroad, no? syempre kailangan rele relevant talaga yung job, yung education nyo dun sa trabaho. Okay, like for example, um, teacher talaga yung professor teacher talaga kayo sa Philippines, right? Um, maganda pa rin na meron kang extra, na meron kang, na certified ka rin sa TESOL or yun nga, sa TEFEL. Okay, save and continue. Okay, pero wag kayong mawawala ng pag-asa kasi kahit hindi naman relevant yung yung education nyo dun sa job, meron pa rin tayong tinatawag na work experience and also related work experience, right? Okay, so, dito sa work experience, sinasabi dito na um, if you are just starting out, so that is highly unlikely. Alright, if you have teaching experience, there is something you want to highlight. If you don't have either, that is alright. Okay, you should look into getting some intern or volunteer experience before you go looking for a job. Okay, yung mga ginagawa natin na online, uh, online teaching, Pasok na yon dito sa work experience. Related work experience. Even if you're not experienced in the TESOL field, this section is where you display any work experience that is even tan tangentially related. Hmm, nabulol ako doon. Pasensya na. Okay, have you ever worked with children? Have you ever worked with non-English speaking people? Helping them not just work alongside a non-English speaking individually? Think about what it takes to be a sole teacher and if you have used any of the same skills in a different job. Okay, yun yung minsan sinasabi ko sa mga nag apply sa, ano, ano, sa Palfish. Kasi sasabihin nila, wala akong teaching experience. Kasi meron naman tayong tinatawag na online and offline. Although, basically, pag sinabing offline, yun yung talagang sa actual, sa school mismo, no? actual school. Pero, Kapag, for example, mer uh, meron kang kapatid or basta kahit sino na tinuturuan mo, although, for example, hindi ka kumikita, wala kang sweldo doon kasi um, voluntarily yung ginagawa mo, pasok na rin siya as work experience so, or as um, teaching experience, right? Ito yung sinasabi dito, related work experience. Kaya yung mga nagsasabi dyan, oh, wala talaga akong experience. It's up to you kung pwede mo siyang sabihin na wala ka talagang experience but you're willing to uh, to be trained yung mga ganun. Otherwise, hindi naman kasi sila naghahanap ng hindi sila naghahanap ng ng uh, 
employment certificate. Alright? So, kung sigurado ka sa sarili mo na meron ka talagang, kunyari, um, tinuruan mo yung kapatid mo or yung anak mo, pasok na siya sa experience, right? Tinuruan mo sila sa homework or tinulungan mo sa homework, pasok na siya sa experience. Okay, Sa- um, save and continue. Next part, how do you make your resume look good? Okay, formatting. Ito, sabi dito, use wide margins to take advantage of space. That does not mean you should fill every bit of space with word- wordiness. Use a bulleted list to make things short, sweet, and easy to read. Okay. Organize your experiences and skills into logical and clear sections that are marked accordingly. Use bold and italic print sparingly, but smartly, to draw the reader's eye to the information you want to highlight. Okay, kasi kapag mukhang komplikado talaga yung resume mo. Minsan, yung, ang, ang sabi dito sa job, job club ang, sabi, ang tawag dito. Ang sabi dito, kailangan yung resume mo talagang attractive. Ano? Hindi dahil super daming nakasulat, pero kailangan talaga organized yung resume. Kasi you have only up to 10 seconds to impress the employer dun sa resume mo. Kaya nga pagkakita niya, within 10 seconds, nakita na niya kaagad, nakahighlight na kung ano yung i-offer mo sa company. Save and continue. Next, focus on accomplishments, not job descriptions. Okay. Mention your job title, then describe what you accomplished and what you worked on that job. Alright, were you a manager? Okay. Ask yourself why the employer needs to know you did what you are claiming. If they do, highlight what they need to know. If they don't, remove it. Make sure the accomplishments you write as yours, you write are yours. Okay, not just your teams or your companies. The employer isn't hiring your project team. They are looking to hire you. Okay, lagay mo kapag na-promote ka, mga ganun, or kung anong project yung na accomplish mo. All right, be specific. All right, being able to explain your former job in a fancy way is helpful, but will not separate you from the field. So be specific about what you accomplished. No mistakes. Okay, ito kailangan talaga no mistakes. Flawless dapat talaga yung resume natin. Okay, read your resume over five times and have five friends read it over two. This may seem like overkill, but something as simple as a typo typo is enough for an employer to toss your resume aside. Okay, this is especially true when you're applying for a job to teach English to new English language learners. If you cannot create a one to two page document that is error free, how can the employer expect you to be an effective English teacher, right? So, no room for mistake <laughs> dun sa ating resume. Kailangan talaga merong magpo-proofread, kailangan mer- uh, merong mag-check. Sabi dito, hindi lang basta two times, no? hindi lang basta twice, but over five times. Alright, save and continue. The, the third subpart is about avoid these common resume mistakes. Okay, being too vague, focusing on jobs instead of experience, and length. Okay, self-explanatory. Alright, save and continue. Sabi dito yung length, no? Alright, so the old rule that your resume has to fit on a single sheet of paper has been thrown out of the window. That does not mean you should turn in a dissertation. Study shows employers give each resume about 25 seconds of attention. You sinabi ko kanina 10 seconds, no? That is only how to um, impress or, yeah, attract the the employer. Pero sabi dito, 25 seconds of attention. So, make sure your resume is dynamic. It is acceptable to have a two or three page resume, but only if you have a lot to show. Do not have a third page on your resume just to tell the employer your hobbies are sports and movies. Use the space you need. 
be concise, but do not worry about filling it onto one sheet of paper. Save and continue. Next, no focus. Most resume include an objective or career summary. If your objective is missing or vague, you may not get a second look. Okay, this could be a great spot to tailor your resume specifically to each employer you are contacting. So be specific and highlight what you are looking for. Okay, and what you want to accomplish. Too busy. Make sure everything on your resume is in a logical place and your resume does not appear too busy. If the employer can't make sense of what you are saying, he or she is going to move on to the next one. Missing important information. Now is the time to be humble. Feel free to act humbly in your interview. But here, are, here you are showing the employer everything that makes you desirable. Then, when you interview, they will have those accomplishments in front of them as they ask you questions. Okay, save and continue. The fourth subpart is final resume tips. Okay, so here are some tips. Dami nito. Okay, one, have a purpose in mind when writing your resume. Alright, besides being organized and categorized effectively, your resume should have a purpose. And tell a story. The more you know what a story is, the more a potential employer will see it. Pay attention to your diction. Look at the job listing and figure out what the employer is looking for and use keywords that will draw their attention. Okay, if you are applying online, some employers filter resumes they receive using a keyword search. Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid to discuss the future briefly in your resume. It can be helpful for you to let the employer know that your career goals are, okay, mga kailangan mga long-term goals, right? Use numbers and figures when possible. We discussed making your accomplishments quantifiable earlier, right? So if you can provide the number that displays your accomplishments, do it. It could be helpful to directly acknowledge any difficulties the employer is facing that you can solve or you could solve. Do some research but only use this if you find something relevant. Do not assume the employer has a problem when they are not or they may not. Whenever possible, use action verbs rather than is or was. This will highlight your role in whatever accomplishment you are noting. Avoid pronouns. Even though you would typically use them, you are the implied subject of every sentence because it is your resume. Instead of writing, I excelled in my undergraduate graduate work earning a 4.0. Write, excelled in undergraduate work earning a 4.0. Okay, kasi kapag naggamit tayo ng mga pronoun, mga ganyan, hindi na siya magmumukhang formal. <laughs> right? Kaya kapag sinabi na um, numbered or diba, kapag bulleted form yung resume natin, hindi mo na kailangan ilagay, hindi you don't, hindi mo na kailangan gumamit ng first person or ng pronoun, no? Ganun na lang. Excel, kasi you're talking about yourself naman eh. Okay, save and continue. Okay, interview techniques, what are they looking for? Okay, here are the interview tips. Do some research, dress to impress, be prepared, be enthusiastic and optimistic, and of course, do not be late. Okay. Alright, so first we need to do some research about the company. Alright, what exactly they are looking for, what they are lacking, and what their mission is. Kailangan alam mo talaga kung ano exactly yung ina-applyan mo, right? Dress to impress. Kailangan talaga magpakita, kasi doon makikita yung um, kung ano tayo as a person, right? Alright, so uh, it says here, while it won't necessarily hurt you to look a little flashy, you might be better off going with a class with classic color combinations. You want to look stable, responsible, and prepared. Makikita yun sa pananamit natin, right? Be prepared. Even though any good employer will have copies of your resume and other materials on hand, bring extra copies in a folder. Okay, if you know you are interviewing with a committee, bring enough to go, um, to go around. Just in case, if you know they are going to ask about is something specific, have an example ready. 
There is no downside to being prepared and in a best case scenario, the employer is impressed by your preparation. Be enthusiastic and optimistic. It is a job interview, so it is okay to be nervous, but you should still be enthusiastic. Be happy to be there and optimistic about your future with the company or school. Confidence is an attractive quality, so remember you have prepared for it. Let yourself be confident, but not overconfident. No. <laughs> Do not be late. This should go without saying, but it's worth saying anyway. Be early for your appointment. If you are traveling a route you are unfamiliar with or has the potential to be heavily trafficked, give yourself extra time. Save and continue. Next, pay attention to the person interviewing you, okay? The interviewer will certainly be listening to your answers, so listen to their questions carefully. Okay, not only will this ensure that you don't seem uninterested, but to also help you understand what they are looking for. Okay, so you can tell a lot about what an employer is looking for by the questions he or she asks. So pay attention to details and tailor your answers accordingly. Next, be specific. Ask questions. Be cognizant of your body language, right? Sabi dito, the interviewer is going to be evaluating everything about you, including your body language. Make sure you are projecting confidence, passion, interest, and enthusiasm. Do not act overly comfortable, but try to stay loose and appear like you belong there. Next, anticipate questions. Many interviewers have, have prescribed questions to avoid legal, legal issues, right? So searching the internet for common interview questions are preparing and preparing answers could really pay off. Practice and follow up, okay? So we need to follow up after the interview. Okay, pero alam naman natin na, no? Kung ano yung mga ibang, yung, kung ano yung mga cues. <laughs> Minsan, kasi right after the interview, sasabihin ka agad nila, lalo na kapag sa mga online teaching, sasabihin ka agad kung pasado ka and they will give you the next step. Pero, pag sinabi sa iyo na, okay, just wait for our email, alam mo na, right? But, it would still be good that after the interview, you send them a message, an appreciation, send them an email, right? That, um, thank you for the, for the time spent. Alright, dun sa interview. And, uh, ayun, kung kunyari, kung during the interview, um, hindi sila masyadong na-impress sa'yo, pero, um, ito guaranteed, no, na kapag nag-send ka ng email sa kanila right after the interview, magpapakita yon na talagang interested ka dun sa job. And, it might change their, um, it might change their decision. Alright? Okay. So, be pleasant and grateful. And you will make sure your name remains in their minds. Alright, save and continue. Okay, third part, sub part, is what not to do in an interview. Alright, so there are three tips, or there are just as there are tips for how to act in an interview, there are some tips also how not to to act in an interview, okay, not, all right, try not to ramble. While you want to answer questions to the best of your ability, keep your answers to the point, all right, no going around the bush. You will show that you know what you are talking about, that you are listening to what they ask, and that you know how to get things done, okay, be friendly, but do not be too personal. It is all right to make a joke, but it has to be a joke you would be willing to make to a stranger, right? So, the interviewer is not your friend. He or she is likely your potential boss or at least a boss. So, act appropriately. Try your best not to look disinterested. If an interviewer has a group of candidates coming in to interview, why would he or she offer the job to someone who does not seem to want it? Pay attention to your involuntary actions and your body language. And make sure you are projecting enthusiasm. Save and continue. Okay, a common question that interviewers ask is, why are you leaving your old job? Right? So, avoid saying anything negative about your old employer or company, even if you frame it as a compliment to the interviewer or his or her company. 
okay, um, unprofessional yun. And, and also unethical. It will still look like you are being disloyal and no one wants a disloyal employee. Give a reason that is steeped in positivity. Like you are looking to grow professionally. Yun, pwede mo siyang sagot na ganun, That you would like to grow professionally. Okay, nothing against the old company, no? Or your previous company. Although you want to appear confident, do not bulldoze the interviewer. It is alright if you take control of the interview at times, but always let the interviewer know that he or she is in charge, or else he or she may be put off. Who wants to work with someone who is going to drown them out, right? Have an opinion, a purpose, and a set of standards. You have to strike a balance between confidence, confidence and flexible, right? Well, no one wants to hire someone who is rigid and arrogant. No one wants to hire someone who just goes along with whatever he or she thinks the management wants, right? So you need to have your own set of standards and opinion. You need to have your own say, right? Avoid being a cliche. The biggest cliche is answering the classic. What is your great, greatest weakness? Question it. Question by turning it into a strength. Saying someone like, my greatest weakness is that I work too hard. Your interviewer is not an idiot. And this is not going to impress him or her. So give him an honest answer. But also provide the work you have done to improve on that weakness and how you handle your weakness on a daily basis. Okay, first of all, hindi naman kasi talaga pagiging weakness yung working too, yung that you work too hard, right? Okay. Save and continue. Right, so next part, possible destinations. While many of you are looking to teach English as a second language in your home country, there are many opportunities for teachers who like to travel, see the world, and learn from different cultures. Here are some of the countries for the most help. Okay, Europe. Asia, Latin America, and Middle East. Okay, so Europe, meron sa Spain, Portugal, Germany, France, Italy, Greece, Poland, Czech, Hungary, and Hungary and Russia. Okay, yung sinabi, yung kung naka, kung member na kayo dun sa group ko sa Facebook, alright, yung ESL, TEFL, and TESOL tutorial, alright, meron dun um, sa job referral. Yung quizzing, actually, yung student, yung mga students doon, mga Spanish. Alright, so, they're from Spain. Alright, Asia, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, China, Indonesia, Mongolia, Turkey, Latin America, Mexico, Costa Rica, Colombia, Chile, and Middle East, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, UAE, Qatar, Egypt, Jordan, and Morocco. Save and continue. Remember, dun sa previous module, sinabi natin na kailangan, alam mo yung background, pati yung culture ng mga students. So now, sa last part in uh, getting a TESOL job, preparing to join a different culture. So if you decide to use your TESOL talents to travel to another country and learn about another culture, make sure you are prepared for the culture you are about to immerse yourself in. Research your destination and learn as much as you can about the culture before you get there. If you do this, you can avoid offending anyone accidentally and ease your way into the culture easily. Typically, you will likely experience this new foreign culture in the following stages. All right, beginning stage, mm -hmm. prepare your journey by doing research about the culture and make sure you are ready for your journey and new environment. Initial happiness, you're in new place, everything is unique and cool. You will initially feel happy to be in this new place and excited to help out the people you meet there. Frustration, okay? Ito yung mga kasama talaga, no? Ito yung mga stages. Alright, frustration, adjustment, adaptation, and re-entry. Mm -hmm. So, when you leave this foreign culture to return home, of course, you may find a way that you go through these stages all over again. All right. You will always cherish your experience with another culture, but be very happy to be home where you are more comfortable. Okay. Wow. Finally, natapos na natin itong buong course at maraming salamat uli. <laughs> Alright, so let's proceed to the exams. Okay, save and continue.
Alright, so first question, to get a TESOL, what are you, are you required to have a college degree in the field? Yes, because employers will not hire you unless you do. Okay. Kaya, kapag sa abroad ito, no, yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. But, kapag online um, ESL, yung ina-applyan nyo, kahit wala kayong college degree dun sa field na yun. Remember, ang tanong dito, yung TESOL job, right? Okay, save and continue. Right, what do you need to include on your resume? Work experience, of course, education, and skills. Ito yung mga titingnan nila. Alright, save and continue. What do employers most want to see in your work experience? Okay, your skills and accomplishments. Alright, make sure that it's yours, right? Not your team, not the company, but your own skills and accomplishments. Save and continue. Number four, when is it important to do research in your preparations? Okay, of course, before applying and also before your interview. Yung mga sasabihin mo dun sa employer din, no, to, impre to impress them that you have done your research. Save and continue. Number five, number five, what should you do after a job interview is over? Okay, follow up with your interview to thank you for the opportunity. Okay, yun yung sinabi ko kanina, no? Kung merong email address, which is napaka-normal ngayon, no? May email address, send them an email right away. Or you may call them as well. Pero mas uh, maganda kung i-email mo, mo na lang sila. At least your name remains there in their mind. Mababasa nila yung email mo. Okay, save and continue. Yeah, Number six, confirm if the following statements are true or false. Letter A, you cannot really do much to anticipate the types of questions that your interviewer will ask. That is false. That's why we really need to do our research, right? Letter B, you should not treat your interviewer like your friend. Of course, it is true. Okay, you can be comfortable, you can be confident, but... Do not treat them like your friend. Now, you can make jokes, pero kailangan yung relevant dun sa, dun sa topic then. Don't be overly confident. Or, because, uh, pwede ka na mag, uh, you, you might look like arrogant to them. No? Okay, so save and continue. Last question. Alright, which of the following feelings should you expect when you leave home to teach English in a different country? Okay, ito na yung iba't ibang um, tawag dito, stages na natalakay natin kanina. Letter A, a sense of biculturalism. Letter B, initial happiness. And of course, frustration. Okay. So, natapos natin, finally, ngayon, check natin yung marks natin. Ako, ito lang yung mark ko, kasi meron akong hindi na-click <laughs> dito sa mga to, right? Kanyari, baka ang na-click ko lang is initial happiness lang, and frustration. So, it means, hindi ko na-click itong isa, yung a sense of biculturalism. So, bawas na siya sa score ko. Okay, save and continue. Yeah, you did it! You just completed the course and we couldn't be prouder of your achievement. Now, click below to see what's next. Okay, so click natin itong next steps. Alright, so natapos na natin, ano? Ayan, graduate na tayo. Way to go! You did it! You're an International Open Academy graduate. And we couldn't be prouder. But why stop there? You're already in the learning zone. Let's look ahead and see what's next. Ayan, kapag gusto nyo mag-continue, ano? <laughs> Pero syempre, hindi naman tayo ma... Tapos na, natapos na natin yung course. And ito yung kailangan natin. Okay, balik tayo dun sa pinaka homepage no, dun sa main page dahil natapos na natin yung course. Ngayon, click niyo yung proof of enrollment. Ayun, makikita niyo dun yung ano, I I suggest na mag i-screenshot niyo siya. All right, so print screen tapos uh, lagay save niyo sa either mag-open kayo ng Word document or lagay niyo sa page. Right? Tapos i-crop niyo na lang. Or you can download or print. Okay, print nyo and then print to PDF. So, masasave siya automatically dun sa computer nyo. 
Next, next is letter of completion. Ito, importante rin to. So, print, then print to PDF. Okay, next, results transcript. Ayan, makikita nyo na yung score nyo, each module. Module, right? Okay, certificate, madadownload siya right away. Okay, PDF siya. So, print to PDF then save to desktop. Alright, or dun sa folder nyo. Tapos, itong ICOES certificate. Mabubiyo nyo lang siya, pero hindi nyo siya mapiprint. So, it's up to you if you want to order it. Okay, print nyo lang yon. Okay, so we're done. <laughs> Alright, thank you once again and I hope that you liked our tutorial. Feel free to share this information or share the link sa mga, kila sa mga kakilala nyo pa or sa mga iba pang aspiring teachers. Thank you and may God bless your application. Alright, so pakita ko lang ulit, ano, ito yung mga certificates ko from International Open Academy. Yan, 120 hours. Alright, certificate number, again, the date. And then, from ICOES, nakita nyo naman, sealed siya, no? And hard copy talaga. Maganda yung paper na pinagprinta nila dyan. <laughs> okay, meron din siyang uh, personalized na, na um, letter. Kasama nito kapag um, minail nila ito sa inyo. Okay? Once again, thank you for attending our live TESOL course tutorial. Alright, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our or share this information. No? You got this tutorial for free, so please... Okay, um, wag tayo magbebenta ng certificate. Okay, share this information for free as well. Alright, sa panahon ng pandemic, kailangan magtulungan tayo. Okay, hindi tayo man lalamang ng kapwa natin. Thank you and God bless your application.